hello, hello! I'm Matthew Horky. And I'm Shireen Tan. Together we are Exotic, Exotic Wine, Wine Travel. Travel. We spent the last three years traveling around the world writing and speaking about unique and exciting wines. Our journey has taken us to both lesser known and established wine regions. In 2016, we came to Croatia for the first time. We fell in love with the country and the wines, prompting us to write the book Cracking Croatian Wine, A Visitor-Friendly Guide. Now we're at it again. We're going to retour the country and bring our book to life. We aim to take you deep into the Croatian food and wine scene. So sit back, relax, and join us as we go Cracking, Cracking Croatian, Croatian Wine! wine. Porich is a resort town on the west coast of Istria. Many families flock here for the laid-back atmosphere and crystal clear water. We're not here for the beaches though, we're here to catch some seafood. And Shireen is ecstatic. Heading out to the sea, get some fresh seafood. You put it in my mouth. Our guide for the day is our friend Milan Podinski. He's the head winemaker at Vina Laguna and is a former Croatian spearfishing champion. He's offered to catch us some raw and uber fresh selfish. Milan starts us off easy with some sea urchin. Next, some local seashells. The, the toughest you can find in the sea. And it's strong. Mm. Yeah, it's quite an unfamiliar flavor. I mean, you still get the saltiness of the sea, but it's almost like it has some kind of herbs to it or something. Mm. But I really, really like the texture. I like that it's tough. Oh, it's bitter. <laughs> what is I this? Take a picture. Sea egg. Oh, then you can see why it's called cool sea egg. <laughs> Not everything is sweet and delicious, though. <laughs> That's a funny one. <laughs> And it's considered a aphrodisiac because it's, it's high in your iodine, sorry. That's funny. <laughs> you eat it. Vina Laguna keeps Milan busy, but he still manages to come out to the sea on a regular basis. After the morning on the boat, Milan and his wife Ivana invite us to their home for a seafood feast. Some local clams, fresh prawn for risotto, lobster, and more sea urchin. Ooh, it smells good. We pair the first few dishes with the reserve wines from Vina Laguna. The winery is one of the largest in the country, but don't let that fool you. Thanks to Milan, they pump out some serious wines. The Visionata Malvasia Reserva is considered to be one of the best fresh Malvasias in Istria and it's showing beautifully on this day. Now it's on to grilling the lobster, sea bream, and a local codfish. In Croatia, fresh fish is prepared with as little ingredients as possible. It's all about the freshness and the flavor of the fish. The first dish up is the lobster, and it takes Shireen by surprise. It's soft, and it's really sweet, and it's really salty. I don't know, it's, it's none, of the, none of the lobster that I had before, and because of the preparation, you know, we grilled it, so there's like a nice smokiness to it, and it's fat and sweet enough. You don't need you don't need butter. You don't need anything to eat with the lobster. Next up, the grilled fish with Swiss chard and potatoes, known in Croatia as blitva. It's my favorite of the afternoon, but Shireen keeps returning okay. to the lobster. I think it's good. Don't disturb me. I'm gonna eat. <laughs> oh. What? The normal. You know. You know. We're stuffed, but now it's onto the vineyard and winery tour. Istria is famous for its terra rosa and iron rich red soil, and Milan tells us a little bit more about it. So, terra rosa is high in clay, and it's not a deep soil. But there is, uh, there is a calcareous rock underneath which serves as a sponge 
that sponge can take the water during the winter, but only if you allow that water to pass through the soil. Next, Milan shows us the new vineyard in the village of Visionata. It was just planted this year and will be 100% certified organic. It's adjacent to the current Visionata vineyard, which is regarded as a prime spot for Malvasia Starska. All the Terra Rossa there, yeah, you can crumble it to the smallest pieces. So Terra Rossa has a structure which is based on clay. This soil here has a structure which has to be or needs to be based on, a, on organic matter. This soil here cannot be treated as Terra Rossa. Here you need to do everything to preserve the organic matter in the soil. We know the wines of Vina Laguna well, but this is the first time we're seeing the winery. The company pumps out nearly 6 million liters of wine annually, but it uses only fruit from its own vineyards. All of the wines are good from top to bottom and are regular award winners at many worldwide competitions. We're big fans of the Fistigia Castello, a blend of Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Syrah. After a full day out in the sun, eating and tasting, we're exhausted, but we have much more ahead of us. The next day we rejoined Dmitry Brechevich. In addition to working at Clay Winery, he also has a personal project and he's taking us up to the village of Ver to see it. My young people, yeah. they left, you know, there is no young people so much anymore here or if they are here, they don't work uh, vineyards. It's a beautiful hilltop town with views over northeastern and central Istria. Dimitri gets Tarana Rafosco from these vineyards. It's only been a few weeks since the shoots have started, but they're already growing like weeds. And you see, he's like exploding now. Next, we're off to the village of Buzet to see Dimitri's cellar. His winery is called Piquentum. The building is an old water storage facility that's built into a hill. Today, it's scorching outside, but inside the winery, it's damp and cool. We have to experiment. We have to. If not, uh, we don't move, you know. Piquentum wines are made with little to no intervention. They're fermented with native yeasts. We're usually fond of the Piquentum Terran and Rafosco, but today we're very impressed by his Sveti Vital Malvasia. It's a reserve wine made from vines over 40 years of age. Ver is home to many abandoned vineyards, and it keeps a few secrets. Perhaps none better than Gerbat's winery. Adriano and his father Antun produce around 2,000 bottles of sparkling wine per year. The winery makes only three wines, two from Tehran and one from Malvasia. All are made using the traditional, aka Champenois method. The Rosé Sparkler is the most popular wine from Gerbats and it's extremely memorable. We first tasted it over a year ago on my birthday, and it's showing well today. First of all, the bubbles are really fine, and secondly, like the winemaker said, it's not perfect. I think I smell a little bit volatile acidity, but it tastes so good. It's so memorable and there's a sense of place. When you taste the wine, you remember it. Second, you can you ask the question of where it comes from. You ask for the stories and that's exactly what we felt when we first tasted this wine. And it just gets better and better. You, or at least for me, I feel like I want to eat when I drink this wine and it gets me happy really. Adriano doesn't speak English, but somehow we understand each other. He shows us everything in the winery. Don't expect any fancy riddling machines or a bottling line. Oh, it still needs to go further down. Okay, okay. Again? Okay. Ah, God, okay. Everything here is done entirely by hand. These wines are true gems in the Istrian wine scene. Don't expect to find them in any shop or restaurant though. You have to go to the source to taste them. Yeah. We want to grab a quick snack, so we stop at a staple in the Istrian restaurant scene, Canoba Stari Podrum. The interior is modern with plenty of natural light. The wine list is also fantastic and the markups are modest by Croatian standards. Our light lunch includes an Istrian frittaia, or also known as an omelette. It's good because of typical prosciutto, they are using a smoke bag, so it adds more flavor and dimension to the, to the egg. And the egg is nicely flavored, they probably added a little bit of salt already. So yeah, I don't have to do any seasoning. And some tiramisu. 
The atmosphere and food are delicious, but Shireen can't get over the fact I stole her seafood risotto from the previous episode. You ate my risotto with a big piece of scampi on the top, and I was like, what? <laughs> Don't take it. Our last stop is Kabula Winery. It's a certified organic winery focusing on Malvasia, Taran, and a local muscat called Muscat Momiansky. Today, we're catching up with the owner, Marino Markajic, and his daughter, Anna. Only maybe less than about Italian winemaking were... legend Yashko Gravner deeply influenced Cabolo, so much so that Marino decided to buy several Georgian Quaveries, also known as Amphoras, to make wine in. He was the first in Croatia to adopt this ancient winemaking technique. We revisit the cellar, which is full of old goodies, before we start opening bottles. One wine that always impresses us from Kabbalah is the barrel-aged Malvasia Unica. You smell the oak first, but the oak has turned into this sweet cinnamon, really sweet spice nose. Um, you get a little bit of the nuttiness as well in the nose. But a deeper sniff of course, you start getting a little bit of dried fruit. Next up is the Malvasia Amphora, made in Georgian Quavery. It sits on the skins for seven months in the quavery before being racked into large oak casks. It's a beauty. Just look at that color. The tasting is going great, but the Markajits family isn't done yet. They have a few more goodies to show us, including their new vintage of spicy olive oil. Next up, their 2007 Taran, which is evolving beautifully and still tastes like a baby. Well, what I like about each Taran is like some of our favorite Sangiovese grape, it always is sweet cherry. Especially for Tehran as well, it's different, it's quintessentially from Istria and it has high acidity but when you get low pH because of the soil that it comes from and you have low alcohol, it gives you a very long life ahead of it to grow, to, to gain these savory notes, to get a bigger body and I love that for older Tehran, you feel that the body starts to get bigger, you get a little bit of the texture and it's, it's just like a meal in a glass. Cabola is another fantastic winery that shouldn't be missed on any visit through Northwest Istria. Sadly, our time in the region is done. We've revisited many friends, tasted a number of stunning wines, and stuffed ourselves with the cuisine. We feel very fond of Istria and hope to make it back soon. But now, we have to head south. In the upcoming episodes, we take you to Dalmatia. like to learn more about Croatia and Croatian wine, keep a lookout for our next episode and check out our book, Cracking Croatian Wine.